My name is Dola Pokukoi. I'm a partner with Detail Commercial Solicitors, and I will be facilitating this session. You are welcome to the Nigeria Renewable Energy Roundtable, Naira. Um, and we're going to be talking about something that affects everybody here, power, um, but renewables. But we'll be talking about um, bridging Nigeria's electricity deficits and integrating renewable energy onto Nigeria's grid. Okay, thank you, Dolakpo, and thank you, everyone, for coming today. Um, my role is really to deal with the off-grid. It's um, really nice to talk and work on the um, people already on grid to improve their service, which is what um, my colleague MDTCN does. But there's actually a bigger problem, and that is to reach universal access. So while everyone's talking about 30, 30, 30, or 20, 30, I'm talking about how do we make sure every Nigerian has access to power by 2030. And the truth is it is possible, but it's possible a mixture of grid and on grid. We've done a least cost developmental model to show that what you need to do to power the people who are off grid. And we found out 75% of these people are better off in terms of the least cost plan by being developed off grid. We also have a program called the Nigerian Electrification Project. That is probably our largest program to date. It's 350 million from the World Bank to develop solar mini grids, solar home systems, and energizing education, and 200 million from the African Development Bank. These are basically performance-based financing or output-based. So one of the reasons when you say things are being sustainable, the private sector does really have to step in here and invest before the subsidy is given. So we have to see you have connected somebody before we say, here's the money. It's really important because some of the subsidies programs we did in the past where we gave money beforehand, um, sometimes they do not show connections. I think that's the, that's the way to put it. We tell the private sector, or we ask the private sector to come and develop um, IPP solutions and distribution solutions for each of these markets. It means each SME also would have a meter, which we make sure is remotely monitored. And I think Sterling Bank here are here today because they're one of the funders of the private sector part of things. So we're not just looking at what government can do, we're also looking at what government can do to encourage the commercial banks to actually lend to renewable developers because having that financial aspect is, is a big, big, big issue in there. So that's what we're working on with, with Power Africa. Um, from the point of West African Power Pool also, we are supporting the hydros, particularly. We are looking at how we can support um, uh, Shiroro. Shiroro um, has uh, one rainy season. You know, if you look at um, um, so one inflow, if you look at uh, uh, Kaenji and Jeba, they have two uh, inflow, so they don't have problem of water like uh, Shiroro. So in case of Shiroro, if we can have um, uh, floating solar on, on Shiroro, it can support uh, the generation in the uh, in the time when the water is level has gone down, and so it means that they can use the solar to do their generation in the daytime, and they can use the water to do in the night. So that is the objective. Um, generally, actually, uh, when we came in TCN, you know that TCN was the weakest in the power value chain. And we, involve, we employ a different innovative measures. Because anybody who said you want to use international best practice to solve problem of Nigeria, is, I don't think the person is intelligent. Because there's nothing like international best practice in what we did here. So what we did when we came here, um, we discovered that TCN was the, was the weakest in the power value chain. And uh, what we did was to uh, come up with different measures that we can do to see that uh, TCN work. For example, when we came, TCN was not audited for all the years that it was established. We have to audit the place and also provide uh, structures that will enable us to attract funding from, uh, from donors and from other financiers. And as I can say today, we are one of the darling of anybody who is looking for money because uh, we are receiving support both in soft and in hard. The issue of solar, panel, uh, solar power integration into the grid is a major challenge because you have to worry about the coupling of that uh, solar, uh, solar plant to the main grid. Also, you have to worry about the fact that solar is sensitive to weather, to different conditions that may be uh, where it is being planted. Or, so you have to worry about the vulnerability issue. 
More importantly, we worry about penetration level of solar. So a, need, a needed aspect of the work is to model properly that solar. You model for variability, and there are different functions, probabilistically speaking, that you have to use to get it right. So you know when it's going to be peak, and when it's going to go down in the valley. If you don't get that right, forget it, because when there is no sunshine, then what you expect to, to have at the end of the tunnel is not going to be there. So studies have been done, and research has to be done in Nigeria to make sure the modeling of that solar plant into the grid has to be done properly so that we get what I call an appropriate penetration index. So having done that, you also have to build controllers around that uh, integration of solar because you don't just put it there, you don't control. You've got to control. And the different value control systems have to be built added to this system. Again, you have to worry about real-time control. It's not just offline control where you worry about you don't know what happens. It's bank bank control. No, you've got to worry about controlling for different data set, controlling for different attenuation, controlling for different variety of parameter space that may exist in the, in the file that you want to penetrate power. And we can't rely on these huge generators to generate that power. These long transmission energy uh, systems will provide that power to every, every Nigerian of 200 million. So the situation that we have in place is that if we promote this option, tariff will go down, more people will use, and therefore more money will even be generated, all right? And there will be less loss, just so we have less waste of energy, all right? And then there will be more businesses, there will be more people will be making money, and therefore, there will be more luxury, a uh, more better life, quality of life will go up. This has been um, over seven years. We've been, we've been working on even getting a renewable energy policy um, and contributing to that. One thing I also want to raise is, for instance, there's a law that bans um, fuel generators already in Nigeria. It's a law that, that states that generators are banned, but that doesn't actually mean that we don't see generators or, uh, you know, diesel or fuel generators coming from our ports. So I think while we are building towards getting a legislation or a law for the renewable energy, we still have to push in the sector. And there are companies that are already doing things without incentives. Even at that, you still see that they're competitive compared to alternative sources, which is the generators or, um, you know, uh, whatever people are using now. Solar is still being is still considered competitive. So as as much as I would like a lot of incentives for the solar sector, I don't also want to see that it's distorting the market and um, not presenting it as a commercially viable sector. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you for speaking to the issues. Thank you.